viewers from around the world. I'm Kristen Schwarz, a licensed midwife and MC here at GOLD. And here at GOLD, we're preparing for a brand new symposium, the latest in Lactation Symposium 2021. And today I have a special guest. I'm chatting with Katrine Nauvalarts about her upcoming presentation titled Babies Cry to Communicate, Not Manipulate, Non-Medical Reasons for Crying and Anthropological Approach. Welcome, Katrine. Uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Good uh, morning, evening. <laughs> it's wonderful to have you here. Um, since we have an international audience, I always like to ask, where in the world are you located and speaking to us from? Um, I'm located in uh, Herentau. That's a small uh, town in uh, Belgium, in Europe. Wonderful. Thank you. So I always love having uh, speakers from all around the world here with us so we can chat and, uh, you know, exchange ideas and, uh, and, you know, find out, of course, about your presentation here as well coming up. Um, so tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. I, I know you have a very interesting background. You were uh, originally, you have a degree and you are a prehistoric archaeologist. So yes, tell us I a little am. bit about that and how you made the jump then to lactation. Yeah, you know, actually, I started my career as an ancient historian. And uh, oh. after that, I uh, graduated as a uh, prehistoric ar archaeologist. And two days a week, I'm still uh, a teacher. I teach history and art history. Oh. And the other five days of the week, I'm an IBCLC and a nutritionist and a an, um, herbalist. Um, but, you know... I, I graduated and I started teaching and then I got three kids and I breastfed them for uh, more than two years and uh, everything changed and, uh, and I decided to do some volunteer work for a breastfeeding organization here in Belgium and then um, I, I, uh, I wanted to do something with my experience and my knowledge and I just turned my career into um, into a profession, uh, into a professional IBCLC, and that's how my private practice was born, Borstwilling <laughs> Aardig. Uh, wonderful, you have just such a fascinating background there, you know, um, and it's wonderful that you're still teaching today, you know, art history and uh, in the field that you originally studied, and you're also an herbalist and now an, also an IBCLC as well. I, I think is the, it, it sounds like you can kind of combine all three areas right the, as an herbalist you know you can probably help uh, you know lactating parents as well with certain herbs what is safe what isn't and nutrition what is good and and also the historic side to understand breastfeeding from a prehistoric perspective as a cultural uh, event and you know it's because we, um, humans have been breastfeeding since the beginning of time right yeah, that's true. That's true. I, I feel, you know, I have a clinical background because you need that as an IBCLC. So yeah. I also did uh, clinical studies, but uh, but the, the sociological way of thinking I had through my um, through my academic career is, is something uh, you don't lose. So um, I can look at things on a different way. I, I feel that when I'm talking to, uh, to colleagues that I'm sometimes I'm looking at things on a different way and that helps me um, by understanding parents. And um, it, you, you hear that during my talk that uh, sometimes, or I, I focus on listening to parents um, trying to understand why they be behave like they behave, why they do things, why wh what's behind, what's their story, and um, that's important to understand where the crying behavior is coming from. Very interesting. Yeah, let's talk about the presentation. You have the presentation is titled, as I mentioned before, "Babies Cry to Communicate, Not Manipulate: Non-Medical Reasons for Crying." And then you have this is the part that it's interesting: an anthropological approach. So tell us a little bit how that plays into the presentation here. How you're looking at things? Um, you know, when you you when you are uh, reading about uh, crying behavior, mm -hmm. um, there are always medical reasons why a baby cries. Um, but I started to search for reasons a baby is crying, but um, um, uh, sometimes babies are crying be because of the 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 way parents. Um, uh, um, handle their baby um, or, 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 or don't handle um, their baby on a natural way. And then the baby is, 
it's like, oh, what's happening? Um, help me, there's something wrong. Uh, and sometimes it's the, the sociological way of, of, of manipulating parents um, um, by doing things that, that's not natural or, that, or the baby don't understand. And I'm just trying to, to, to focus parents on the natural way of human behavior. And, mm -hmm. and if, you, if you do that, you can, you can reduce crying behavior. That's very interesting. Yeah, I know. And and we have come a long way from the time when, uh, you know, uh, I don't know how it was in your, uh, you know, society where you grew up in, but like there was for a long time that um, the older generations were saying, don't pick up the baby too much. You're spoiling the baby. The baby needs to learn how to kind of be on its own so it can get along in the world later. Otherwise, you know, it will always be dependent on you and never be independent or never become a, an adult who can cope with situations situation we have come a long way already from that but I feel still it is there that yeah. that um you know society looks at this as a crying baby or oh, a crying baby is a bad baby only a, <laughs> a silent baby a smiling baby a cooing and ah is a baby that is good baby right and and yeah. um th these kind of labels uh, are, are so hurtful and 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 to create a lot of damage too right yeah yeah yeah, it does. It does. And th that are topics that uh, that you can hear during my talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to it. Your presentation will be live on October 26 here. And uh, we will learn more all about this uh, wonderful presentation then. And it will, of course, be recorded to for our viewers who can't be there live. Um, Katrin, before I let you go, a little nugget of wisdom for us, a little last word for you, for our viewers. Um, there's a saying in English that says um, breastfeeding solves it all. It's warmth, it's food, <laughs> it's, um, um, uh, how do you say that, resurrection, um, it's, it's, uh, it's love, it's bre breastfeeding solves it all. It's a solution for every problem. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe that's a uh, a little part of my talk. Oh, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Katrine, for sharing that uh, here with our viewers. And um, thank you for sitting down here with me and chatting uh, about uh, your background and the upcoming presentation. And uh, for our viewers, if you would like to find out more about this symposium, it's called Latest in Lactation Symposium 2021 here at Gold. Um, I, vis I advise you to go to goldlearning.com. There you'll find information about this presentation and all the other presentations in the symposium. The symposium will be live on October 25th and 26th. And as I mentioned, everything is recorded. So you can always watch the presentation at a later date as well. That's it for me here for now from Gold. Thank you everyone for watching. Bye-bye.